chapter 10, verse 24. I want to invite you back tonight. Tonight I'm going to preach a very different type of message. I'm going to preach a message entitled, There is a God in the church. There is a God in the church. I'm going to take the words that David said to Goliath. And I want to show you some things tonight I hope that will help spur us on to a great spring now that we're beginning to thaw. How many had snow on your porch this morning? Ain't it unbelievable here in April? But uh, time's coming quickly and coming soon. The spring is here. Brother Mike has finished his Timothy uh, Team 316 and it's time to put it in action. Amen. You realize you're in the most unattended Sunday of the year. There's two Sundays in the year that have the lowest attendance of any Sundays at all. That's the Sunday after Christmas and the Sunday after Easter. So I appreciate you being here. This is a pretty good crowd for the Sunday after Easter. Amen? And I appreciate you being here. I want to make you aware before I start preaching this morning of something that happened yesterday. And if you've watched your news, I hope you were aware of it. There was a poison gas attack in Syria yesterday. How many of y'all heard about that? You realize that's the code word for chemical weapons. Chemical warfare. The news networks are not going to tell you that. They don't want you to realize that. They don't want you to know that. And we must realize that we're closer to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been, folks. Targeted was a hospital and some homes of some families, not military targets, but people. That is a sign of the Antichrist, because that's what he's going to do. He's going to be the most murderous monster that ever lived on the face of the earth. Hitler will be a puppy compared to him. And this King Assad is already, I would say he's the John the Baptist of the Antichrist. He's the forerunner. They were uh, reportedly, uh, that's been reported in the main media, 40 killed, but in most uh, outlets in the Middle East, they're reporting 80 or more killed. Whole families died together. Sick people in their hospital beds died because this king has an evil heart. The government did this and was firing on its own people. This is senseless and barbaric. It's a sign of the last times. And I'm going to try every Sunday as the weeks go by when something happens prophetic inside of the news, I'm going to share it with you and remind you of it as the time draws near for the coming of the Lord because he is coming soon. Amen. Now let's finish the message on the pattern for ministry this morning. We've been talking about a pattern for ministry. We talked about you must do it personally. Uh, don't be contrary to doctrine. There are clear on directives. Conscious duty. Call to devotion. Compassion that should be deepened. Class and demonstrate. Convert the delinquent. Courteous and not dueling. Charitable to death. Now we're on B, position. And we're talking about in verse, the second, nice next part of the verse, where the Bible says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto what? Love and what? Good works. Love and good works. So consider one another. We've got to learn to care about each other. That's ministry. Ministry is caring for each other. There's a list of things in Ephesians chapter 4 that we ought to consider. First of all, there is to edify. Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Folks, we are to encourage each other. We're to encourage each other. 
I tell you, I'm beginning to realize how crazy the mail is today. I got all my cards yesterday. I don't know, I left last the hospital and come home and the hospital had to mail them to my house. So I was very encouraged yesterday as I opened all my cards and read all my mail. That's encouragement. All the phone calls, all the text. I thought one day my phone was blowing up. Bleep, 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 bleep. Uh, that's encouraging, just encouraging each other. We're in an age where we like to make fun of each other. We've got to learn not to do that. We've got we to learn picking on each other. We've got we to learn to really realize the loads that people are bearing. And that we need to encourage each other to fight the good fight of faith. Then holy in verse 30 of Ephesians 4. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you're sealed to the day of redemption. We not only got to edify each other, but we have got to be holy for the Holy Ghost. We must be holy for the Holy Spirit of God. We got to be holy and clean so he can work through us and reach through us to other people and take these lives that we have and turn them into more than just mortal days. But lives of investment in reaching people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to edify one another. We've got to be holy. Number three, animosity must be done away with. Verse 31 says, let all bitterness. It's time to just quit being bitter. Bitter is being mad for a long time. Now, some folks blow up and blow on. Some people have that ability. They'll blow up and then they're over it. But some folks blow up and blow on and keep on blowing and keep on blowing. And they're bitter and they're angry for a long time. And folks, we can't be that way. We've got to learn to love and let go. Amen? If somebody hurts you, just let it go and let God handle it. Edify, holy, animosity, then fury. A long spot of bitterness will make you furious. It'd make you want to reach out and touch somebody. Ask Conor McGregor about that. Any of y'all know who Conor McGregor is? He's an MMA fighter. Now, it's all right if you want to crawl in a cage and smack somebody and get paid for it. That's your business. But you can't do it outside the cage. He uh, started throwing things. and He started hurting people. Hey, he went to jail for it. Say amen or oh me. Furious. Got angry and hurt someone. That's wrath and anger and man, a rage. Verse 31 says, and wrath and anger. Folks, we should not get so mad that we become wrathful. That we got to get so mad we got to hurt somebody with words or actions. Then cry. There's clamor, screaming and yelling. That's and clamor in verse 31. Have you ever heard somebody get so mad they go, Aah! Don't lie to the preacher. You know you've done it. I mean, things just get on to you so bad you just want to scream. Or you want to yell at somebody. Now, that's another ball game. Blowing off steam and screaming, but when you start yelling at somebody, you've crossed the line. You've crossed the line to clamor, screaming, Yelling, throwing a fit. Throwing a fit ain't going to change a thing. Throwing a fit's not going to change anything. It's just going to make you look stupid. Make you look uncontrollable. We're supposed to be under the humble hand of the Holy Ghost. Do you think the Holy Ghost told you to yell at somebody? Or scream at somebody? And now I know y'all are looking innocent, but you're all guilty. Because I'm guilty. And you're guilty. And we shouldn't do those things. And then blasphemy, evil speaking and railing, verse 31. Uh, evil speaking and, and listen, just, just on. And Have you ever met somebody who just said, I just wish you'd shut up? I mean, they just complain on and on and on like a broken record. And they're railing on something. Everybody... They come in contact with, they got to tell their bad, mad story on and on and on. That's railing. 
That's evil. That's blasphemy. Blasphemy is speaking evil of someone. When you blaspheme God, you speak evil of him, right? Well, that also goes with other people. Blaspheming other people. Well, you just don't know what they've done to me, preacher. I don't give a flip what they did to you. Shut up. Let God handle it. Let God take care of it. Edify, holy, animosity, fury, blasphemy, then cruelty, malice, spite, and nastiness. Verse 31. And put away from you all malice. We can be cruel sometimes. Somebody said, aren't children cruel? Yeah, because they get it from their mom and their daddy. Cruelty. Just saying ugly things because you can. Just being nasty just because you can. Just doing ugly things just because you can. You don't do that. You don't do something in spite. You ever spited somebody, done something just because you could, just to get even with them? You don't do that. Let God handle what's going on. Then number eight is easy. I'm, uh, number, yes, number eight is easy. Verse 32 says, And be ye what? Kind one to another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Not easy in the sense of easily done, but just be easy with it. Just be easy with it. Just be kind. People are going to do you wrong. We talked about it in Sunday school. People are going to persecute you. People are going to misquote you. People are going to misinterpret you. As a Christian, more than anything else, they're going to misinterpret you. And your, your actions may be kind, but they'll be misinterpreted. You may be reaching out in love, but it'll be misinterpreted. Don't worry about it when somebody does it. Just go easy with it. Just, just back off. Go easy. Why? Because we've got to be like Jesus was. Jesus was forgiving. Jesus was kind. We should not hold our position in an evil spot. We should hold our position as a lover of men without being moved by hatred, jealousy, bitterness, or even pettiness. We hold this position by keeping out Priorities right. Jesus first, others second, yourselves last. Keep your nastiness to yourself. Keep your bitterness to yourself. Matter of fact, do your best to get it out of your life. And just go easy. Amen? Just take it easy. You know, most of us wouldn't take blood pressure pills if we'd just take it easy. You know, I learned if you lay in a bed for 10 days and take it easy, your blood pressure will handle itself. Until they come in wanting blood gases. Right, Mike? Mike and I know what we're talking about. Four o'clock in the morning. I'm asleep. And this woman, what was a vampire, Turn the light on. That's the answer. I got to take your blood gases. Four in the morning. Now, if I get this backwards, one well, of you good doctors will straighten me out. I think Kevin will. Which is it Kevin has nerves, arteries, or veins? Or do you remember? Veins. You see, they take blood out of your arteries for just normal stuff. But they got to take it out of the vein for blood gases. And blood uh, veins have nerves. And that woman with a needle that long, at four in the morning, she missed my vein. She rolled my vein. And Walter wanted to tell her where she could go spend the rest of the day. And then God reminded me of what this verse said. <laughs> Just take it easy. I said, I got a needle this long in my arm, and this woman's doing this right here, and God wants me to take it easy. Then Jesus reminded me. He laid his hands on a cross and took nails for me. And you know how he took them? Easy. 
So instead of smacking that woman, which is what I wanted to do, I just gritted my teeth and took it easy. Why? Because I had a testimony I had to keep up. Because, you know, everybody on that floor knew I was a preacher somehow. And they was watching everything I was doing. And on that floor, they didn't come in by ones. They come in in groves. You had a nurse. You had a CNA. And then you had, what was the third one? Trained the nurses coming in, but there was still nurse. Four of them. Then one cleans your room. And every time you go to sleep, they had to come in and see you. Come on now, amen or oh me. They had to come in and visit. Every time you go to sleep, they want to come in and see you. And they got something they got to do. And I promise you, when you get down at the hospital, you won't even know what the word dignity is no more. Forget it. There ain't no such thing as dignity no more. I mean, just throw it out the window. Would you be quiet up here on the front row? I'll tell you one thing. Ten days in the same room with one woman will either heal you or kill you. It'll do one or the other. I promise you that. <laughs> just take it easy. Amen. And uh, listen. We must consider others above ourselves because that's the position Jesus took and that's the position we got to take. Now see, persistence. The Bible says here to provoke. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. We're to be persistent in provoking. Always being a cheerleader in the work of God. Peg McCamey is a cheerleader. Aren't y'all glad she's coming to see us? If y'all ain't never met Peg, y'all got to come meet Peg. I guarantee you, you'll never be the same. Jesus will rub off on you from her. I promise you. She's a cheerleader. I mean, she'll get to shouting and hollering and she'll just be excited for Jesus. Make you get excited for Jesus. You see, ministry is being a cheerleader. Not a gossip stirrer or a gossip spreader. Cheer them on to fearlessness. Look at Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you when? Not tomorrow, but today. For the Egyptians, that's the world, whom ye have seen today, Ye shall see them again, what? No more, forever. Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> I got to tell this, y'all look like you could use a joke. They told me nine times, Tuesday. Was it Tuesday we went home? I can't remember, all my days are running together. Tuesday, I was coming home. And nine times, they changed their mind. Now that'll test your patience. Finally, I just got up in the bed and said, y'all just all leave me alone. And you know, as soon as I got back up in the bed, you can go home now, Mr. Yancey. So here I go. You got to realize that bed's just high off the ground. It takes me and Wendy and two nurses to get me in and out. You didn't have to giggle right there. That just wasn't necessary. Necessary. So I get out to bed and get dressed, and I'm sitting on the edge of the bed. Mr. Yancey, we're trying to get a wheelchair. Okay. This is a hospital. Did you hear what I said? They had to send a fax to get a wheelchair in a hospital. That was at 2 o'clock. I don't know what happened to that fax. But at 4.30, I'm still sitting on the edge of the side of the bed. And they ain't looking for a wheelchair in a hospital. Then the nurse finally comes in and says, I'm really tired of this. I thought, no, really. No, really, you're tired of it. We're going to wheel you down in your lounge chair. I said, no. You got to be jive. 
That, wheel, that chair was big as this pulpit. They must have thought I weighed a thousand pounds. Said, no, we got a man coming down. Can't find a wheelchair in a hospital. They go wheel me down in a lounge chair. They make me get in that lounge chair. Here comes this super Don a whopping dude, arms as big as Texas. Said, now me and this woman going to move you downstairs. They push me out in the hall, and everybody's looking at me. Look at that fat dude in that big chair. Good night. Looked like a beached whale sitting up on the edge of the beach. And I'm sitting there, and I'm laid back, and they pushing, and the woman at the man, <laughs> you can't make this up. It's the truth. The woman down at the station says, they found the wheelchair. The Dino Whopping Dude said, we ain't waiting. And they shove that thing up in the elevator. And they sh down to the bottom. And there's 99 people trying to get in the elevator when my door opened. And there I sit in all my glory, sitting in my Dino Whopping Big Chair. And they push me out in the cold air. I ain't been out to side in 10 days. I mean, that breeze hit me, but i tell you one thing. I was going home. Say amen or oh me. I was headed. Hey, look, I was encouraged to get out of that hospital. Thought I'm going to never get there. Nobody give me any hope. But bless God, God delivered me, and I ain't seeing them Egyptians no more. Say amen or oh me. I was coming home. Look, the salvation of the Lord's today. You may not think it's going to be today, <clears throat> but it'll be today. Amen? He's going to deliver you. Encourage each other not to fear the antics of the enemy. Keep your eyes on the saving arm of the Lord daily. He's going to load your bucket with benefits. I mean to tell you, every day God blesses. Every day God guides. Every day God supplies. Amen? See, I found out this week the Lord loves my aunt. She's been taking a lot of trips here lately. She, she's in retirement. She goes to the coast and she goes to North Carolina. I can't never find her. She ain't never home. But you know what? She come home this week and somebody, and she ain't got no idea who, doesn't put a roof on her house. Say amen, isn't her? Put a roof on her house. I mean to tell you what a blessing. An unexpected blessing. Out of nowhere, say amen. Hey, God daily loads us with benefits. He's going to take care of me and you. So don't fear. I was afraid I was going to spend more and more night with the frogs. But in that large, well, big chair, they got me out of there. Say amen, oh me. Deliverance was mine. Cheer them on to faithfulness. Look at 1 Samuel 14, 6. And Jonathan, David's best friend, said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of the uncircumcised, that it may be the Lord will work for us. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that thine, uh, thine heard. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy what? Thy heart. How do we cheer them on? By being by each other's side. By being by each other's side. We're there to encourage each other and to lift each other up. I had a, I'm going to write a book on my hospital stay because it's interesting. I think it was the second night I was there. Y'all know for the week before, I didn't sleep none at all. I mean, I may have got one or two nights sleep the week before I went to the hospital, so that'll make anybody kind of, you know, dumb. And all the time I'm awake, I found out you could get gun smoke on YouTube. And so I watched gun smoke. Me and James Arnett is on a first name basis. 
Matter of fact, I started with the first episode. I'm writing how many times he's been shot and what part of the body he got shot in. And when I get done, I'm going to tell y'all how many times James Arnest been shot in gun smoke. Right now I'm up to 15 times and I ain't into the second season. Say amen or oh me. He, I mean, when they died, I, he died, I bet you they could count the holes in his body when he got shot so many times. So I was dreaming I was on gun smoke. Sean never got to be in the movie, so the movie started, Preacher Yancey did. I got to be on Gunsmoke. And I was in Miss Kitty's saloon. I must have been preaching. I know I wasn't in there drinking. I, I was in the saloon. and I don't know what happened in my dream, but something spoofed me. And literally, honest to God, I know y'all ain't going to believe it. There's my witness sitting right there. I jumped, slam out that hospital bed with the rails up. And I didn't come down no easy way either. My hind parts got hung on the rail. Stop, Wendy. Stop laughing at me. Here come all them nurses again. Woo! Woo! What are you doing? Ah! Get back in that bed, Mr. Yancey. I didn't even know who I was. I might have been drinking in that saloon. I don't know. I, I just know when I woke up, my hind end was hurting and I was in the floor. And them women were screaming because they thought they was going to have to pick me up. Ah! They were squalling. And I got up and got back in the bed. And they chewing me out. Oh, my soul. They are evermore. Why was you doing that? You know you ain't supposed to be out that bed. You need something you're supposed to ring. I said, what are you talking about? You jumped over right to the bed. You... All I knew was my hind end hurt. I didn't know nothing else. I just knew I was in pain. And they fussing at me. Now I know how these children feel when they fall and gotten hurt and mom and daddy's jumping on them. Say amen on me. Poor kids. Don't you do that to your child. They don't know what's happened either. And I, I'm, I'm sitting there and they're fussing at me and throwing a fit at me and giving me a hard time. And I didn't even know what was going on. Be, be careful. Before you jump on somebody, you don't know what they're going through. Be careful. People are hurting in this world, amen? And they can do some stupid things when they hurt. They can do some stupid things when they got prednisone running through their veins. And all kind of antibiotics running through their veins. It make you do some stupid stuff. But don't jump on them, but encourage them to be faithful. One nurse was running her mouth, the other one says, Mr. Yancey, go on, let me help you get your legs and get you back in the bed. That other woman, I just want to tell her to shut up. But that one nurse was just so nice. Of course, Wendy, she's over there laughing. She ain't worth nothing. <laughs> she run around the bed, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't got to laugh and just left me sitting there. I just, you know. Next time I'm going to tell her, no, I'm dying. Maybe see. I can get a different reaction out of her. But that one nurse was such an encouragement to me. She helped me get back in the bed and she patted me on the arm and says, don't worry about what that woman said. You, you okay. I thought to myself, I'm glad for the encouragement, but I ain't my hind end hurts. I thought, no, I'm not okay. I'm in bad shape here. Folks, we got to remind each other that the Lord will work for us. The Lord is able to do far above all we can ask or think. I mean, I, I thought on by Thursday, the middle of that week, I won't ever get no better. But the Lord's able, amen? The Lord's able and he's willing. There's no one who can hold the Lord back. But there's one thing that'll hold the Lord back. And that's faithlessness. Have faith in God. Be faithful to God. And he'll work a miracle for you. Amen? He'll work a miracle for you. 
Folks, I'm telling you, he's able, and nothing will hold his hand back by many or by few. All hell can't stop God from blessing you if you're faithful and you have faith and you don't give in and you don't give up. We have to let each other know we do and love each other and we care for each other with a whole heart, unconditional, unconditionally loving each other. Number three, share them to the future. But beloved, we are persuaded. Better things of you. That's not a put down there. What that's saying is it might be hard now, but things is going to get better. Say amen. We probably got the lowest tens of the year, David. That's all right. It's going to get better. Amen. We've got to be persuaded of good things. And things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your labor, work and labor of love, your ministry. God knows what you've done. That's why you're going through a hard time. That's why you're suffering the persecution of the enemy. It's because you've had a hard time. You've had a rough time. You've been faithful. And the devil's trying to stop you. Which you have showed toward his name. That you minister to the saints and do minister. And we desire every one of you to show the same diligence, full assurance of what? Hoping to the end. That you be not slothful or lazy or slack, but follows of them through what? Faith and patience that inherit the promises. We know we can do great things. We know we're doing great things. We know we can keep it up despite the fight of the enemy. We know that we know you're men and women of God with character. We know you're diligent. We can't quit. No quitting. No shortcuts. We know we can make it to the finish line. We just got to hold his hand. We just got to hold his hand. Aren't you glad in this race it's not the first one that wins? You know what this race of faith in Hebrews chapter 11? This race we're running, as long as you cross the finish line, you win. First, ain't got nothing to do with it. Just cross the finish line. Belief in God's promises. Plus, patiently waiting for the Lord equals the blessings of Almighty God. And then cheer them to finish. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are and passed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Lay aside every way in the sin which does so to beset us. Let us run with patience the race set before us. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured for such a contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest you be wearied and faint in your what? Weaknesses in your mind. Listen to me and we'll go home. Losing those things holding you back. What's holding you back this morning? What's stopping you from ministering for God? Lose it. Cast it away. Stay steady on the pace of victory. Eyes on the coach, the Lord Jesus. And during the time you cross that finish line, cheering each other on, lifting each other up, Running hand in hand, arm in arm. Amen? Sometimes it's, we get rebuked or corrected that provokes us to serve God. But if God's spanking you, it's because he loves you. Amen? Provoking each other to good works until the finish line. Folks, I want to hear the Lord tell me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You say, Brother Walt, how do you know you ain't finished? Here I am. I got more to do. Here you are. You got more to do. Let's keep running till he blows that trumpet and we cross that finish line. And let's make sure we do it with grace on our face and in our pace and then have the devil on the chase. Every head's bowed.